welcome back. It's a good night to be here or a good day to be here, wherever and whenever your group's meeting. We're just happy that you guys have taken the time and made the commitment to get together and meet as friends now. Hopefully you are enjoying just the fellowship of each other and you're making new friends and getting to know one another better. And As we come together to talk about these sermons of Jesus' parables, um, I'm hoping, and I know Pastor Mike's hoping too, that these discussions are making our sermons a lot better. Mm -hmm. Because I find that when you know we have the opportunity to interact with them, all of a sudden now things start to make a little more sense and uh, has more impact to our lives. So that's a great way to supplement your church worship experiences to have these groups. So we hope that they are being uh, just an amazing time for you. And tonight we have, or today we have a great sermon to talk about, a parable of Jesus about the great banquet. And I love this parable for so many reasons, Pastor Mike, because I love the idea that God loves a party. Mm -hmm. You know, I I mean, I don't know about you, but sometimes you can, when you grow up in the church, you can sometimes believe that like it's all supposed to be serious and boring and somber. And we never really imagine that, you know, God in heaven is throwing the greatest party ever in the universe. And, you know, of course, we wonder about that. Right what that's like and you know what will be happening will there be music there and what will it be like and right. what about the food i mean the bible talks about it's the best of everything that's yeah. going to be there so uh you know just an amazing parable that jesus uses to really uh bring to light what it's like going to be in the to be in the kingdom of god you know and when you when you say the greatest party ever i'm always it's always interesting to me because when i go to a really good party they have a lot of different levels to them there's that that party that like your child's getting married and you dance and you carry on but there's also these parties where you have in every party i've been in there's always so these intimate moments you know because there's usually a lot of people around and you have conversation with people and you're able to you know really kind of uh you know either spiritually or physically embrace people but when you say the best of everything one, one thing i know is that uh it's never a party if you have to have a time frame on it when somebody sends me an invitation and says a party's going to be from 1 to 2.30, uh, that's that's a meeting. Uh, parties say it starts at 1 o'clock, and then you hope for the best. You hope to clean up before the hall kicks you out. You know, that's, that's to me, uh, the best thing. And I, I, I think the, the neat thing, or I don't use the word neat very often in my language, but uh, about this, the greatest party ever is it doesn't have an end time on it. Yeah, I think that's... I think that's pretty cool. You know, I do think, though, it has a start time to it. Yeah. You know, I mean, can you imagine throwing a party and, you know, your house, because you, you have to get your house ready. Right. You have to get things ready. Right. You have to send invitations out. You have to be prepared. And, I mean, I don't know. If everyone shows up early, I guess they can help. But, uh, you know, at some point in time, you want to have everything ready to go. And you want to you want to give people the opportunity to look forward to something. And I think that... One of the things that's interesting about this parable to me is that, you know, first of all, God invites everybody. You know, this invitation goes out Mm -hmm. and he's not selective over who he invites. He says, go invite all these people. But then some of them say, I'm not coming. I mean, you've had two daughters get married, Pastor Mike, you know, Um, and, you know, obviously there's thought that goes into things like that. Who and who's invited? How many people can you invite? And I and I guarantee you how many that, people can I afford? Exactly. Yeah, okay. And I guarantee you that when you're you know you're throwing a party like that at great expense, there comes a point when you have to say, well, we just have to cut that off. Yeah. You know, but it's not because your heart wants to cut right. it off. It's because your checkbook wants to cut it off, or the size of the, the room. you know the room. Mm-hmm. But with God's party, He says no. He's got unlimited resources. He's got unlimited space. He throws it out to everybody. Mm-hmm. But at the same time. You know, it's 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 weird because you know his party's going to be packed, but he still he grieves over those who refuse to come. Right. Yeah. It's you a, know? That, that's one of the things about our God is that he always grieves about people that use any excuse or just say I you know basically just don't want to come. I don't want to be involved in receiving all the benefits, all the blessings, all the wonderment uh, of that party, and that's kind of one of the ongoing things. And it's interesting you asked. Uh, Something in the middle of that, Keith, that might be kind of a cosmic question for for the group to to uh, to talk about uh, at their small groups is you asked you, you said uh, it it doesn't have an end time but it does have a start time. Well, the cosmic question I have is 
is it a different start time for every person? You know, one of those things, or is it really at a moment, you know, whether it's the apocalypse or some other time where, where this, where this party uh, starts? What I can, my answer would be, well, go when the invitation says to go. That, you know, I mean, think back to your daughter's weddings again. I'm going to use that example right. based on what you just said. Can you imagine what would have happened if the, you know, the day before your wedding or the day before the wedding, people showed up and said, okay, we're here for the wedding. Right. We're here for the party. You know, and you just, well, okay, hang out, you know. But what would have been even worse, more tragic, would have been if people showed up a day late. Yeah. And, you know, you come to the church getting ready for a Sunday morning, and there's somebody sitting in the church waiting for, you know, one of your daughter's weddings. You say, hey, I'm sorry, you know, you missed it. Right. I said, what do you mean? You mean I can't come whenever I decide? Right. Of course not. Right. When, when, when someone invites us to a party, we have to go whenever the invitation says, because... You know, we're not the ones throwing the party. We're the ones invited. Right. But it's amazing to me how many people, when it comes to their faith, how many people who are invited, you know, by God into this great party, want to say to God, well, you know, I, I'd love to come to your party, but here's when I think I can make it, and here's when it should be. And, and this, you know, this is a parable that makes it clear to us that when God invites us, that's when we have the opportunity to go. It's not our timetable. It's not... Right up to us to decide or tell God when we're going to show up or if we're going to show up. God says very clearly, this is the party. You've been invited. You can come to it or you can can stay away. But regardless, my party will be full. You know, I go to a lot of weddings as, as do you. And it's, it's interesting to me uh, when you walk into a reception and you see that table there with the name cards yeah. and you look at, at, all these name cards of people who said they were coming, right? Responded with, yes, I will be there. And there's a place for them. And there's even a plate of food paid for and provided yeah, the to host, them. The host is prepared it's, for It's them. ready. Everything's spent. And yet, for whatever reason, they don't make it. Right. And I've always wondered about that. Like, why would a person say they're going to come and then fail to? Now, I'm sure there's a variety of reasons. Just like in Jesus' parable... There were a variety of reasons, but you want to know something? I bet you none of those reasons really softens the blow to that, you know, father of the of the bride who planned that party, or the or that bride and the groom who were who were uh, expecting those guests to arrive, and and when they didn't come, I, I I'm sure that there was, you know, in the midst of the awesome party, just a, a little maybe tinge of sadness there for those who right. missed out. Well, you know. because for the most part, any host including our Heavenly Father, knows what we know, yeah. is for the most part, we always make time for the things that are valuable to us. Once in a while, you know, an emergency comes up that prevents us from going somewhere where we want. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to this party, most of the people that don't come to my party, your party, or our Heavenly Father's party, they don't come because they didn't make time for it because they didn't think it was valuable. That's a great point, you know. That's a great point, and I think it applies to so many areas of our lives. You know, and that that's another thing that I think that you guys can unpack tonight in your talk. Or you know, really ask those questions. What are the things in your lives that you you want to be important to you, but you just haven't been able to do it? And and where does your faith fit into that? Where does your involvement in 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 the faith community of the church fit into that? Are you living your life as though your faith in Christ is the most important thing to you, you know, or has it has it just taken a backseat to so many of the other things that get in the way? Notice that those things in the parable that the people came to Jesus to to make excuses about, none of those were bad things. No, right. Nobody said, oh, I can't make it to your party. I have to go out and murder somebody. It was all normal life stuff. But they were excuses. But they were excuses. And one's as good as another. Right? It, exactly. At the end of the day, it didn't make a difference what it was, did it? No. Nope. It only mattered that they were not there. not there. And you know what? That's something I want I want you guys to think about tonight and, and in your own life is, you know, you can have a list a mile long of things that are that are more important than, than, than your faith. But at the end of the day, it isn't about what those things are. It's just about the fact that you've been invited and that God desperately wants you to be there. He paid the price. He made the way. He's got a spot at the table for you to come. And our prayer tonight is that 
you know, you would say yes and that you'd show up to that invitation. So we know there's a lot of things that you guys can talk about with us tonight, and uh, we want you to get to it. So let's go ahead and pray, and we'll send you into your time of discussion. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the invitation that you give to each of us to this amazing party that we know is going to be better than anything that we could be doing. So Lord, just convict our hearts of all the excuses that we make and reveal to us that really when we do that, it's us that that are missing out on so much. So Lord, help our hearts to be so in love with you that wherever you invite us to, whatever you would choose to, to uh, ask of us, that we would show up, Lord, and show up with enthusiasm, with joy, and with thanksgiving at the fact that we've been invited to your party. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great discussion.